All right, welcome back. Episode 181 of Chaotically Intolerant. We're going to be covering a little bit of Major League Baseball at the top of the show. Um, we're going to talk uh, World Series, first matchup possible, imaginable, I guess. Um, and then week seven of the NFL, it was crazy. And then we'll pick week eight. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go. All right, Mike. So let's lead it off. Big, big news, obviously, in Major League Baseball, the biggest. Um, we got the worst matchup. <laughs> yeah, uh, we went from, I think, one of the best last year, great underdog story of Texas against Arizona and showing how great MLB's postseason can be to Dodgers Yankees. Not only the big, you know, the evil, evil empires, uh, but the two number of one each seeds. league. Yeah. Of each league. When the number one seeds matching up is actually pretty rare. In fact, the only time it's happened since 99 in a non shortened season was Red Sox Cardinals in 2013. So to actually get the two teams with the best record is uh, a little unusual. Um, yeah, it stinks. I don't really know who to root for. I, mean, I can't, it's hard to root for the Yankees, but it's really hard to root for the Dodgers these days. And like, think about, they talk about the adversity they face this year with the injuries, but it helps when you can spend that much money and have that many star players on your roster that you can, yeah. you know, you can put up with just using your bullpen a little bit more in the playoffs. Their lineup is completely healthy with the exception of Freeman playing a little diminished, but you know, that's what's been getting them through the postseason anyway. Um, yeah, it, it's, oh, man, it's, uh, it just reminds me a lot of, Phillies Yankees back in 09 I kind of felt the same about that it was like oh you know and the Phillies were the defending champs at that point and the Yankees are always the Yankees so lesser I don't know who the lesser of two evils is in this I yeah know. that so that that 13 Red Sox team it's funny that they were the number one seat because they were underdogs going into that year no one had them even making the playoffs and then they're the number one team in the American League um, Apple has also announced they're going to be making a documentary about this World Series um, because it's such a big deal. Why, I mean, they had a great underdog story just last year. They could have done that with, um, and they, I don't know, squandered the opportunity, didn't want to do it. Clearly, it's not as interesting to Apple as major as, as Dodgers-Yankees, but that makes the most sense that, of course, Apple, a major company like that, would love Dodgers-Yankees. Well, it's big businesses against small businesses. Last year, I guess the Rangers and Diamondbacks are small businesses, and Dodgers and Yankees align more with the big big business model of Apple. So, yeah. yeah, that's a shame. And it's not like the Yankees and Dodgers have never faced off in a World Series. I think when the Red Sox <laughs> played the Dodgers in 18, I don't think they had met or it had been an extremely long time. I can't remember. But the Yankees and Dodgers played in the 80s. They played in the 70s. I think, what is this, like the fourth or fifth or sixth? Time they faced I think off it's the, the most common matchup. I could be wrong. I think it's the most common World Series matchup. Yeah, so we go from suddenly what's been the most common Super Bowl last year to the most common World Series. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's actually the most common postseason matchup. Um, they've wow. had 12 series in their history. Yankees-Guardians is actually number two. So... Yeah, really oh, weird. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yankees, yeah, just repeating all their history this year. I don't think they're counting Major League, though. They did not count Major League. Um, the ALC, the was that the ALCS in Major League? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. Um, so give, what, are, what are the keys to victory? Give me your keys to victory for each team. Yeah, how much can the Dodgers extract from their starting rotation um, when it was – Good. It was really good. Flaherty's first start in the NLCS was outstanding, and his second start was terrible. Um, Yamamoto's first start of the postseason was bad. His uh, two starts since have been pretty good. Uh, I think that's. I mean, that's been a big storyline. I think the possible return of Alex Vezia and maybe Bruce Dargraderall for the Dodgers lengthens that bullpen a lot, and Vezia would be the guy that is used to face Juan Soto. Most likely, he's the Soto neutralizer, and then just. You know, the other one for the Dodgers is can they keep up this torrid pace? They scored 70 runs 
in the postseason in 11 games, which, I mean, you know, October is supposed to be when the pitching takes over and these big offenses get shut down. And that has not been the case at all. Um, Tommy Edmond, I knew as soon as the Dodgers signed him, he was he had postseason hero written all over him. Just the exact kind of move the Dodgers yeah. would make to supplement the other. It's not like they did enough Even in the, the offseason. Name. Right? What's that? Even his name, like it just sounds like I, I could hear myself in five years going, remember the Tommy Edmond run Tommy in Edmund the 2024 yeah, exactly. World Series? Exactly. And you think about who they got in the offseason with Otani and Teoscar Hernandez and Glasnow and Yamamoto. And then it's like, okay, all right, they're done. They're not going to add any more, right? And then, oh, well, Kopech, Flaherty, Edmund, you know. And then you get these other guys that just, I don't know, where step up guy like Anthony Bonda. We pitched on like 14 different teams in the last couple of years. Uh, not that many, but um, so those are the we keys. We could also have Donner. another Will Smith, another Will Smith. Another World Will Smith series, in the World Series. Yes, yes. The uh, the Yankees ended the other Will Smiths run, though. Yeah. So they could end all the Will Smiths runs this year. But it's at least the fifth straight World Series to feature a guy. I guess, although Will Smith, the pitcher, wasn't on the – was injured, I think, one of those years of, with the Astros. But uh, the keys for the Yankees, they're starting pitching, right? Like what Garrett Cole shows up. Um, they're talking about possibly Nestor Cortez coming back as like a swing guy. But the rotation's been pretty good. I mean, Rodon, Rodon is the kind of guy when he's good, he's really good. But he's prone to the implosions. Just, can he limit that in his starts if he can? Dodgers, I mean, the Dodgers work a lot of walks. The Mets gave up a lot of walks. That was a formula for a disaster for the Mets in that series. The Yankees are a much better strike-throwing team. They're just overall a better pitching staff. I think they can neutralize the Dodgers a little bit. I mean, I don't know what neutralizing them looks like when a team's scoring six and a half runs a game. It might only be down to five runs a game. Um, and then, you know, what does Stanton do for an encore? What does Soto do for an encore? And Judge. I mean, you got the three guys. I don't. I don't think the Yankees inherently have a ton of holes in their lineup, but the Dodgers definitely don't. Um, can the Yankees get enough production from the bottom of their order? Because it feels almost inevitable that the Dodgers will. You saw what Andy Pajas did. He had two homer game hitting out of the nine hole in uh, in game five. And uh, the Dodgers have gotten enough production up and down the lineup. Um, and then the bullpen for the Yankees, can they keep doing it? Tommy Canely, changeup after changeup after changeup. He's a former Dodger. Luke Weaver, can this breakout season continue for one more series? Um, and then how well do the Yankees play on the road? They're going to be on the road the first two games, and then if it goes to six and seven, same thing. What does home field advantage mean? Um, only once since the Red Sox in 13 has a team clinched the World Series at home. Seems unusual, uh, hmm. you know, these days for a team to actually yeah. clinch the World Series in front of their home fans. So Dodgers will be trying to do that. Um, they would have done it in 2020 because they won it in six games, but of course they were playing in a bubble. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I, I actually, I, I try to watch as many postseason games as I can. I'm a very busy man. Um, I did watch uh, Juan Soto hit the three run home run in the 10 mm. and my stomach just, I was sitting in a bar and I was the <laughs> only one watching the game too. They had it on a projector. There was college football on the other side. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I watch college football all day. I'm going to watch Yankees Guardians and Juan Soto. You could just feel it in that at bat. You could, I think anyone could have told you he's going, he's going to put the Yankees ahead here. And I mean, the fact he turned down $440 million and he might get more now, like that, that rarely happens where a guy turns down a massive contract like that and he still works out for him. He's going to get, I mean, a blank check, right? For the Yankees. I mean, how much, how much are they not going to sign for? Like, what's the limit here? Yeah, it's going to be 550, 600. I mean, it shouldn't be more than Otani because Soto's not pitching next year, but yeah. it, it's going to be an insane amount. I think part of the reason he turned it down with the with Washington was that he didn't feel like they were going to contend within the next few years, and he's not wrong. Yeah. I think he wanted to be out there and have a chance to win every year the same way that Otani did. I mean, obviously the difference is Soto already has a world series ring, you know, from 2019, but you know, you, I guess you can't blame these guys because they don't want to go down as those great, one of those great players that didn't win enough in the postseason. Barry Bonds never won a ring. You know, he got to a game yeah. seven, but didn't win. So uh, Soto. Yeah. In that a moment too, I think the guardians should have left class A in because he had gotten his mojo back in that ninth inning. He was only at 12 pitches. And I mm -hmm. said at the time, they take him out. They're going to lose this game. They brought in Gaddis, who was worn 
And, uh, and Soto worked a bunch of pitches and you could just feel the deeper it got in that bat, he was going to do something big. Didn't necessarily know it was going to be a homer, but he was going to make the guardians pay. And it, yeah, this year, I mean, not that the Mets are any kind of little engine that could with their payroll, but the guardians <laughs> were kind of the one kind of underdog type team. Although we've seen the guardians a lot, in the Indians guardians a lot in the postseason over the years, but this yeah. team felt like a real scrappy bunch. And when they won that game two and they came, I'm sorry, game three, they came back in game four from down four runs. I was like, they, maybe they can do this. And then the Yankees just broke their spirit. Um, so, yeah. It, it felt like watching, watching a movie where the good guys lose at the end. Just the, the drama of the Soto home run. He's standing basically like halfway between home and first screaming at the dugout. Like, yeah. let's fucking go. You know, just it, it felt like a movie. It felt like a horrible ending to a movie, to a, a good baseball movie. Yeah, um, there's a, an episode of South Park where they uh, they have the little kids play against the Detroit Red Wings and they they not only beat the crap out of them on the ice, but actually beat the kids. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty messed up, but I mean, it's, and then they're celebrating at the end and hugging each other. Like they accomplished something and they won the game, like 35 to nothing in a hockey game. And that's kind of what it feels like the Dodgers and Yankees, like celebrating, like it's a bit, you know, you're supposed to be here. And I know it's hard because yeah. baseball, it, it's a little bit of a different animal, but like the way these two rosters in particular are set up, I mean, they're, I hate to say it, it almost felt like there was no way it couldn't happen. Yeah. I um I I also I can't I have a hard time rooting against Shohei. He's just I mean it's also the Yankees so I'm inherently I'm going to have a bias against the Yankees, but Shohei is just a likable guy. I know people are sick of it. People are sick of the media coverage with him, but he's just to me he's very likable. He's He's never really getting in trouble. You can say what you want about the gambling thing. Who, who knows? But he just always has a smile on his face. Doesn't really get in trouble. Doesn't cause problems for anyone. Just seems like he loves the game. He absolutely loves baseball. So if if somebody's going to win this World Series, I would like to see Shohei get his ring. Especially having to live in Anaheim, watching the Dodgers go to the playoffs every year. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where I'm going. I mean, I was in, also in a bar and I had to be around people rooting for the Yankees because I'm in New York. But I also lived in L.A. and I, I just despised everything kind of about the city and about the sports fandom. So I really don't know which way I'm going on this one. Yeah, not not a good uh, not a good position they put us in. Also, the Rays, um, I think we did talk about this. The uh, the top came off the trop and the hurricane. Um, I actually saw someone on Facebook Marketplace selling a piece of the roof wow. for $2,500 that he found on the road. Hilarious. Nice. The guy was holding it up. It was taller than him. <laughs> oh, man. Good Halloween costume. The, the death of the Tampa Bay Rays, I don't know. Um, but Major League Baseball says they want them to stay in the Tampa area. So I heard the Yankees offered a Steinbrenner Field, Steinbrenner Park, whatever. Um, for the for the Rays, so maybe they'll be able to fill that. You know, you never know. <laughs> they probably won't maybe be able. The Yankees to. really are the good guys, and we should root for them because they offered their. They stadium. could be the good guys. Yeah, um, I'm curious what Major League Baseball is going to do about that, though. There is a really good athletic park in Orlando, uh, run by Disney. So, hmm. very curious about that. Um, but let's go to football, the the important stuff. Um, I want to talk about. Let's talk about Thursday night because let's just get it out of the way. That was a horrible, disgusting, gross game. Um, nothing good to say about, I think, either team, honestly. I think the Broncos won a game that they should have won. Um, and the Saints are just really, 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 really bad. Well, yeah, the, the Broncos bounced back nicely from that rough start they had in the Charger game. They got some momentum coming back and then... Mm -hmm. I mean, the Saints starting a rookie quarterback in a year where they're already falling apart. I mean, and, and Sean Payton, I'm sure he could say what he wants, but he had this game circled. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He was ready to go for this. Um, I like I think when I, I turned this game on for two minutes and then I was like, you know what? I have really anything else I could be doing at this moment. Um, so I'm going to just do that. Uh, Pats, Jags in London, the Jags. I mean, for, for a second, for a second, it felt like Doug Peterson's going to be left on the tarmac in London. Um, New England went up 10 nothing early, and then Jacksonville kind of exploded um, and, you know, put their foot down. So Doug Peterson survives at least for another week. 
and they, and they committed to running the ball and, and it made Trevor Lawrence really efficient. They ran it 39 times as a team for 171. If you do that, you can actually say, hey, I'm not going to just be that Doug Peterson and try to call crazy plays and have Lawrence just chuck it all over the place. I, maybe the Jaguars can actually find a little bit of footing, but um, you heard Gerard Mayo talk about maybe calling his players a little bit soft after the game. Yeah. That was kind of a dig at Belichick. That's a Belichickian thing to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, Drake May's numbers were – were actually pretty solid. I mean, especially when they didn't have a run game. And so it, I don't know, it's hard to tell because the team around him is pretty bad, but you know, he, he, I think this is the time where he learns and he gets a chance to face some adversity. And I think this will help him down the road. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think this Pat's team, I mean, obviously they're not going anywhere this year, but especially with probably a high draft pick, you're probably gonna have a top five draft pick. They can really build around him. They can really put him in a good position to succeed. And again, with a team this bad, a rookie quarterback with those numbers, even last week through three touchdowns, not I would be very happy if I'm a Pats fan. This is yeah. this is a lost season. I think it started as a lost season. Um, you know, obviously there's always a chance, but you're one in six. Take the good, take the good things. And the Jags on the other side, you won a game. You're two and five now. So um Take take a win when when you can get it because it might be pretty rare. Seahawks Falcons, the duality of Kirk Cousins. Um, <laughs> we uh, we thought you know they they had three straight wins. They had that win against the Saints, the big win on Thursday night against the Bucks, and then they just kicked the shit out of the Panthers, which is exactly what they were supposed to do. We thought okay, they're back on track now. They found their footing because they had struggled. You know they had a loss to the Steelers, tough loss to the Chiefs. And then right back to uh, right back to week one with this loss to Seattle. Um, not good, not good at all. Kirk had two interceptions and a uh, fumble that was brought back for a touchdown. Two interceptions. Well, the Falcons were winning uh, the yes. um, the division games, which they needed to do, and mm -hmm. um, the Seahawks have been playing. Poorly. I mean, they got off that 3 0 start. But look at the division now. Look at the, you know, Ayuk's out for the 49ers for the year. No one seems to want to take that division. So this game to me was a little more about Seattle getting itself right. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't panic for Atlanta because you think about how they started the year one and two. They had won the three straight. So yeah, this wasn't a great effort. Obviously, I think defensively more concerning than even offensively. But I think this was more about Seattle getting itself on track. And by the way, I just found out Kirk Cousins and Jake Cousins are cousins, the pitcher for the Yankees. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, good time uh, for the Cousins family. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. And Seattle, I mean, listen, they're, this is, this is a game that, that they, I think it was a coin flip for them going into it, especially after that three game skid and to win it so decisively, that's a big confidence boost, especially for uh, McDaniels. McDaniels? Is that the head coach? No, McDonald. 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 Yeah. There's a lot of Mike Mix out there. Um, yeah, yeah. Mike McDonald to hold this Falcons offense to 14 points, which um, Bijan Robinson did have 103 rushing yards, but still, you know, bending but don't break, getting turnovers when you need it. That's a very big confidence boost. And they're the favorite to run away with this division right now, I think, yeah. after what happened this week. Yeah. I mean, that's it's Seattle – won a game that they really needed to win for their season, and they did it convincingly, which tells me a lot. Yeah. Uh, Titans-Bills. Um, again, I, I had Bills' money line, I think, for my favorite favorite. Um, I was sweating a little bit in the first half. I was like, okay, are we going to are, are we gonna turn the gas on a little bit? Um, and they did. And I, I think the MVP of this game, it's not Josh Allen. It's not Keon Coleman. I think it's Amari Cooper. Because Amari Cooper, one, did have an impact. He had his first touchdown. But he also opened the offense up. Keon Coleman was given an opportunity to look like a number one wide receiver. And he did exactly that. Four receptions for 125. Clearly, Amari Cooper has a bigger impact on an offense that's actually really good compared to that Browns offense where it's just difficult to get him the football. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do. Yeah, and and also I think this was kind of a typical game for Buffalo where, you know, they're playing a, a team that they easily could have played down to their competition and they got behind 10 nothing, and 
this easily could have been one where they're like, oh, short week and, and it's a trap game. And um, so for them to turn it around, open things up, and then the defense just suffocating, you know, Mason Rudolph and the Titans, which is what they're supposed to do. And it's like kind of hard to believe, but the Bills are five and two. They are. And they had that, yeah. you know, a couple of, well, they had the ugly loss to the Ravens and then they lost a close one to Houston. And it was kind of like, oh, here we go. Buffalo's not really that good. And it's like, okay, now they bounce back, beat the Jets, beat the Titans. Hard to tell exactly how good they are, um, but I think a win like this, no turnovers for Josh Allen. Fortunately, the addition of Cooper now, there's a little bit of juice in the offense. So maybe the Bills are kind of flying under the radar a little bit as one of the better teams in the AFC. Yeah, I think after that hot start, they, they really took a dive, but this is a game they, they needed to win for their confidence, and they did exactly that. Um, you really don't want to be four and three also, because there's a lot of four and three teams in the NFL that are just kind of, you don't really know who they are. I, and I'm speaking about the Colts. I'm speaking about the uh, Denver Broncos. Um, I'm talking about the Seahawks and the Falcons as well. All those are four and three teams, um, but Buffalo five and two gives them a little bit of breathing room. Um, Bengals Browns, Joe Burrow gets the first win in Cleveland in his career. Um, we're not going to talk about Deshaun Watson those things um but it was kind of funny how they on the drive that he got hurt they scored almost immediately like Nick Chubb found the end zone and was like okay the Browns are going to be back which DTR did struggle hurt his thumb Jameis came in and looked great so he should have been the number two he should have been the starter honestly going into today or into Sunday um but I'm just happy to see Jameis at least look good and when he was talking about Watson at the after the game he sounded like a teacher who got a really bad substitute note. Like the kids were misbehaving. He had to do the thing where he sits on his desk and is like, in all my years of teaching, I yeah. have never had a class behave so poorly. I was, I, Jameis just makes me laugh. I love Jameis. And uh, the Bengals get back on track. That's a, that's a big division game that you had to win. I don't think you could lose to the Browns in this situation. Threw me off there. He said it was Joe Flacco's first career win in Cleveland, not Joe Burrow. I was like, no, I'm sorry, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. I'm yeah. sorry, Joe Burrow. All right, I can call you out on that. No, I bur- He's had a lot. Hard, and, <laughs> yeah, it's well, you know, maybe to think about Flacco. The Browns probably missing him right now. They had a lot of completions, not a lot of yards. The Browns, and I just, I mean, it's funny because Watson was 15 for 17 for 128 when he went out, but it's just. I, I don't know. I almost get the feeling that with him out, they're going to relax a little. I, I feel like it's just, I don't know, you know, in terms of the clubhouse and the respect level, what it is, but it just seems like the weight of his contract and his bad performance has got to bring them down. And I just get the feeling that they, like you said, they right away goes out, they score. They may actually just relax and play football now. And, and these other quarterbacks mm-hmm. know that they don't have, you know, looking over their shoulders. So I don't know where they're going to go, whether it's Winston or DTR. I guess DTR is still with an injury. So why not go with Winston? But um, yeah. Bailey Zappi was signed to the practice squad as he well. Was, so he know, is, this, yeah. Does that mean he gets a Super Bowl ring with the Chiefs, even if they still win? That's my question because that's where <laughs> they got him. Um, yeah. And for the Bengals, I mean, chipping away a little bit, they're three and one on the road. This is, they haven't won a home game yet, but they are three and four. So they're yeah. still, they're, they're, they're working their way back into discussion. I mean, it wasn't like a pretty game by any means, but it was an efficient game for Burrow. Um, even though they didn't run the ball well, they they won a game they had to. Yeah. Um, Bengals had the Eagles next week, which is funny. They have had the same last two opponents, just flip-flop. They have both played the Giants and the Browns in the last two weeks. Right. Both teams have won those games. One of them did not struggle against the Giants. We'll talk about that a little later, um, but they both struggled against the Browns. This is what I mean. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, but at the end of the day, a, a team like the Bengals, who always start out slow, you just want to get some wins, get get some wins under your belt, and gear up for November, basically. Um, but it's a big test in Week Eight. Uh, Texans Packers. The Packers finally have a good kicker. Brandon McManus walks it off, um, and the Texans. This offense is not nearly as potent as it was last year. I'm, I'm curious about what's going on over there. It feels like a lot of times uh, Stroud, he, I mean, he sacked four times. He was running for his life a lot. It, it, I don't know if it's 
just the offensive line or if it's the play calling, but they seem out of sync. It just it looked like he never got comfortable, and I actually had a chance to watch some of this game. And, um, and, and they just didn't get I – mean, who did they get involved in the offense? Diggs had five catches. No one else had more than two, and his five catches went for 23 yards. So clearly the, it, Stroud's either not buying enough time or they're not giving him enough time. And, I mean, 55 net yards passing, and they still had a chance to win the game. So, yeah, yeah it's a little concerning. I don't want to say the Texans are a fraudulent 5-2 and two team, but it, it just doesn't feel like they haven't inspired a lot of confidence. You know, they've beaten some teams that they're supposed to beat, but they haven't had that one win where it's like, okay, they look like a contender. I know they beat Buffalo. They kind of had to hang on in that game, and Buffalo played horribly, and part of that is the Texans' defense. Texans' defense is, is strong. Um, but it feels like the defense has had to carry the team this year to an extent. Might be a little bit of that uh, that Jag syndrome from last year. We could be yeah, could be seeing that. You know, they they come out as the favorite for the South, and they're they're underwhelming. They've been very underwhelming so far. Um, the Colts have them next week, which is a big divisional matchup. They're one game back, um, which their win against the Dolphins um, helped them pull within a game back. Listen. Anthony Richardson is again. I, I've said this before. Like you're not gonna get, you're not getting prime, you're not getting a prime time player yet. This guy is a raw talent. He's played however many games um, before coming into the NFL, like 17 games. So you're just not gonna get an, an elite talent. Now you have a ton of skill, a ton of potential. It's just not coming yet. I mean, that's that's what I've been saying all year. He's. It's gonna take a few years before you even know before he can really be polished into a quarterback. Um, he does not give you the best chance to win. That is just flat out simple. That Those are the statistics. He does not give you the best chance to win. He gives you the most dynamic uh, in offense. You get, you know, you're, you're really like three-dimensional. You have a running quarterback. You have great running back with Jonathan Taylor when he's healthy. And then you also have a, he has a fucking cannon. Um, he can't hit the short passes. He was just not good. This week, he was not good. He hasn't been good ever since week one. Um, they just kind of eked it out. The The Miami offense is horrible. This was just a horrible game. Some people think it was a defensive game. No, it was teams were not, the teams were not executing. Richardson had a fumble inside the Miami 10-yard line um, early in the game. Uh, there was two second-half fumbles and a missed field goal from Miami. Um, so they left a lot of points on the board. This was just... This was not a good game. These are not good football teams. Miami has a great defense. I'll give that to them. Um, but to be fair, Richardson plays like that against pretty much every defense. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Um, so the Colts are, I mean, the Colts are in a really difficult position here. Do, do you care if, if you care about developing your quarterback? One thing I would do, you take away his running, you take away his legs for the moment. Because that is, while it is his best weapon, it's also getting him hurt. And if he's hurt, he's not on the field. And if he's not on the field, he will never develop as a passer. That also means you have to say, we don't care about winning games right now. We don't. They, they shouldn't. They should care about developing the quarterback. Now, if they care about winning games, you sit Richardson and you put Flacco in. He's the best. He gives you the best chance to win, and that's it. Um, now, if Richardson develops as a passer, of course you open up the playbook and you let him use his legs assuming he can protect himself. But right now, the, those two are, are completely – that you can't win games with Richardson and you can't develop them with Flacco in a quarterback. So they're in a very difficult position. There's people who get paid millions of dollars to make that decision, and I don't think they know how to make that decision because I can't make that decision. Uh, yeah, I feel like the, this was just a weird game. I mean, there were 77 run plays to 52 pass plays um, in this game. <laughs> The like Richardson was 10 of 24. <laughs> he was 10 of 24. I mean, both teams committed to running the ball. I think the stars of this game are Grant Stored and Zaire Franklin. They combined for 35 tackles. So maybe there's a good encouraging takeaway for the Colts defense. But yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, the Colts, it does they do not feel like a four and three team at all, but here they are. No. They're 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 much more equivalent to the Broncos, I think, which is Colt, Colts, Broncos, horses, hilarious. Yeah. Um, but they are they are definitely more equivalent to them. With Flacco in, listen, they, they, I think they're a 10-win, maybe an 11-win team with Flacco. They could go out and win a playoff game just like the Browns did. Um, I, I would say, I mean, they don't have they don't have nearly as close 
to the Browns' defense. The Browns' defense last year was so much better than what we have. Our, our defense is horrible. Um, so don't let that ten, giving up 10 points fool you. This is a horrible Miami offense that ranks in the bottom. They are the worst offense in the league. So um, they, they're beating up on bad opponents. Um, they also got flexed into the Week 9 Sunday Night Football game, which I am terrified for against the Vikings. I did not want that. I would rather watch us get humiliated at 1 o'clock um, like I do every week. But mm-hmm. Lions-Vikings, Jared Goff is an MVP candidate, I'm afraid to say. Yeah, I mean, he's he's playing great. He's playing like, gee, I don't know, the number one pick in the draft that he was. And, <laughs> um, first game without Aiden Hutchinson defense. You know, he let Minnesota – I mean, I think Minnesota showed – that they are for real. I think this was a game where it was like they could have been outclassed and they got behind by 11 points. They, they fought their way back. Um, didn't work out for them in the end, but uh, Detroit, man, their offense is humming right now. And it's going to have to, I mean, with Hutchinson out, that really hurts their pass rush. Unless they go out and make a big trade to fill that void. Um, you know, Detroit's defense has been better this year, I think, than last year a little bit, but um, I do think, man, it's hard to shake what that injury means to Detroit, but, The offense just looking great. Yeah. Um, Gibbs and Montgomery want to be called Sonic and Knuckles. Um, That's their, that's their nickname they want. So I'm excited for that. And uh, Jamison Williams also suspended for two games for a PED violation. I think that's Mm -hmm. his second PED violation. So not good. Big loss for them for the next couple of weeks. Um, Luckily, I think they have a weaker schedule. Let me look at what's, Coming up for them, Titans and Packers. So weak game against the Titans and a big divisional matchup against the Packers. So uh, they will get him back for the Texans, though, Um, which who knows if they'll even need him. Maybe they're just really good. Uh, Eagles-Giants, Eagles game they should have won. They should have won it handily, and they did both of those things. Um, Barkley was amazing. He, you know, despite the booze, he he really showed them. Shouldn't have let me walk. So he's right. And the giants are just, I mean, I don't, I think it's just time to give up on Daniel Jones. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get, you know, the, there's just, it's been long enough to know if a quarterback can be consistently good. Yeah. He's shown flashes, but what is this year five for him? Year four or five, six, maybe. I, I thought I, it was longer. Yeah. Uh, oh, 2019. Yes. This is sixth year. I just, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's ugly for the giants. I mean, the Eagles, I think this was a bigger deal for the Eagles because not only does, you know, I mean, Hurts' numbers were so modest, but they didn't have to be good because they ran it 45 times. But I think there's been a lot of consternation about the Eagles lately and how underwhelming they are. But, you know, they come out and they do exactly what they're supposed to do. And again, like all these calls for Nick Sirianni and his job, they're four and two in a division that's very winnable and probably gaining a little bit of confidence each week. Yeah, um, Sirianni keeps his job, I guess. I I still don't. I I believe in Daniel Jones. I think it would take. I think he just needs a change of scenery. Look at the quarterbacks that that have been written off and got a change of scenery and found their footing. So I would love to see him somewhere else. I, I don't even know. Maybe Cleveland. I don't. I don't know if he would. Sur- I mean, he survived in New York. He can survive the Cleveland fans. Um, anywhere else but New York. Um, Rams Raiders. I had absolutely nothing on this game. This game was not interesting to me. I think in our week, I do our weekly recap on Sunday nights. Um, I literally just said the Rams won the game. That's all. I had nothing interesting on this game. No, they were my uh, money line favorite for the week. So they they did the bare minimum (laughs) and beat the Raiders. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, Commanders. Destroy the Panthers. Um, Jaden Daniels did leave the game. I think that was more precautionary. Uh, his mom said he's fine, but they were up 27 nothing at the time. No need to, you know, put him back in. Yeah, how about Marcus Mariota throwing up some pretty good numbers there? I mean, it's Carolina, yeah. sure. Uh, but um, Bryce Young got – I mean, Dalton was horrible. Bryce Young comes in, goes two for two for minus 40 yards. I mean, this Panthers team is just miserable. They're miserable. And, but, you know, good for Washington because this was a game coming off a, you know, a big emotional game against Baltimore that they lost. And, and you thought maybe they could let down and struggle with the Panthers. And they just blitz them just the way yeah. they should. That's what, that's, what every, that's what everyone should be doing with young quarterbacks. I don't know why it's not happening more often. 
um, young quarterbacks struggle under pressure. Who would have thought? Yeah. Um, Chiefs, Niners, again, I mean, the Chiefs didn't look awesome, but their defense is really fucking good. Mahomes is just Patrick Mahomes. He, they still find ways to win, and they win handily, and the Niners lose two big, big pieces. Yeah. Um, it, you know, uh, the, the, <laughs> the Niners are just broken. They're just broken. Like, they, how many chances can they get, you know, to, to be in the Super Bowl, to have this window? And I don't care what anyone says about the Chiefs and their numbers and their offensive struggles. They're inevitable. And they yeah. will always, as long as Mahomes is out there, no matter who else is out there, they will always make the plays that they need to make. And Mahomes' numbers were pretty bad, but he had one huge run for a touchdown. They ran it 39 times for 184. They're not supposed to be able to do that with Pacheco out. So my uh, Kareem Hunt prop bet looked pretty good when uh, he had 78 yards. Purdy had three picks. Niners get, what, a garbage touchdown late. They basically were held in the low teens all game. This Chiefs defense is ridiculous. If they figure it out offensively, they actually have a shot to go undefeated. I don't think they will. But 15-2, and 16-1, and one, that seems like a real possibility. Yeah. Mahomes also uh, 6-0 and with more interceptions than touchdown passes. The last yeah. quarterback to do that through six games, Peyton Manning, 2015. They went on to win the Super Bowl. Um, I would be sick if we had to watch a three-peat. I'll say that. I would be sick. Um, that would be just yeah, gross. Get your bag's ready. It might happen. So Yeah. Uh, Jet Steelers. Russ absolutely cooks. Um, things looked a little bleak to start things out. And then the Steelers just found their footing. Um, and I mean, I, I would assume you just roll with Russ right now. You, you keep going with him until maybe the offense sputters. Definitely talk about guys that needed a change of scenery. Russ had the rough go in Denver, but you know, here he is in Pittsburgh, got a good team around him. It battle of the oldest Super Bowl winning quarterbacks still in the league. Of course, there aren't many anymore because Mahomes seems to win every single one of them. But the Jets, man, the Jets are horrible. It's just they're two and five with Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, who had about three for 30 in his debut. Talk negatively all you want about the Steelers. They're going to keep finding ways to win. They're going to have their games where they look awful and people say they stink. How can they go far? And Tomlin's going to say, screw you. I'm getting this team ready. I'm going to win next week, probably going to win the week after that. We're going to do it with defense. We're going to find different ways. Yeah. And I don't think the Steelers are fraudulent. I don't think they're a fraudulent 5-2 and two team. I think they're a team that, you know, has some holes, sure. I don't think they're a potent offensive team by any means. But they play great defense. They run the football. I mean, it, it's kind of old-school Steeler football. I mean, when yeah. we're expecting Pittsburgh to be like a big, air it out, you know, offensive explosion kind of team, that's, that's really never been there style. They had a year or two there with Tommy Maddox where it was a lot of fun and they were they, they were scoring a ton of points but they weren't stopping anybody. Tommy and Maddox. They, Tommy Maddox, <laughs> touchdown Tommy. Yeah, they they got to a divisional game in 02, but they, you know, when they win, yeah, I mean obviously they had good offenses, they could score points with Roethlisberger, but they've always been a physical hard-nosed team that wins with defense mainly with defense first. And uh and yeah, I mean as a Ravens fan, I'm I'm worried about them in that division. And, you know, Ravens and Steelers will match up in a few weeks. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think I said it. I said it on uh, the Spring Hill Sports or Four Down Spring Hill Sports Card podcast. Um, th this was a I think this was a no lose for Pittsburgh, whether you start Russ or Fields. Um, you were four and two going into this game. So you have a little bit of breathing room. You're going to stay over 500 if you lose. Um, it's the Jets as well. So, you know. Either way, you're, you're not going to be the number one storyline coming out of this game, whether Russ sucks or he looks really good. So this was a really good spot for them to try to try Russ out, and it clearly worked out well. Um, they, yeah. they couldn't – I really didn't think there was a losing situation because if Russ just sucks, you drop to four and three. Oh, well, you go out and play fields, and who do, you, who do they have next? I think it was a lighter opponent as well next. Yeah, they got the Giants next. So easy rebound spot to – for them. So I don't, I didn't mind it at all. I liked it. And it's Mike Tomlin, great coach. So big win. Um, yeah. 30 your boys unanswered. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Your boys Ravens bucks, 41, 31. Um, I had the bucks plus three and a half. So the end of the game, I was just 
just holding my, I was sitting on the edge of my seat, like just fidgeting because uh, I really needed that Bucks touchdown at the end, of, at the end there, but couldn't pull it off. Um, the Ravens didn't want to be nice. And uh, Baker, you know, the, the offense was still kind of there. I mean, obviously they were down big pretty early. So, but the Ra- I think the Ravens are maybe the best team in football right now. Well, I think the Ravens were being nice by letting the Bucks back into the game in the first place. They, they <laughs> kind of had a habit of that. There were four games this week where teams were down 10 nothing and came back and won. There were three in the early window, and then the Ravens did it last night. The Steelers, they were down nine to the Jets before scoring 31 straight. So we saw a bunch of these teams get, you know, like make adjustments. Um, yeah, I mean – when the Ravens offense is clicking and Derrick Henry opening things up, it's great. And it was a rough start. I mean, Lamar on one drive was the first time in his career. He got sacked on back-to-back plays on the opening drive. Just completely got blindsided on one or not blindsided. Just didn't see the guy coming right in his face. Um, They made some adjustments. Henry started to really wear team, wear the bucks down. He's been doing that teams all year. And the Ravens defense got, you know, a couple of big plays from Marlon Humphrey who did, uh, worrisome by the way uh left the game with a knee injury and then the ravens just as as they are prone to do took their foot off the gas late in the game gave up a couple easy touchdowns gave up an onside kick they're the only team in the nfl to give up an onside kick this year they've done it twice they they given up two yeah (laughs) yeah they let dallas back into that game what was it 28 to 6 and they hung on one by three they 41 18 on the box i mean it yeah, it didn't ever feel like they were going to lose the game once they they took command. But again, it's like, why even put your defense out there? Why risk guys, more guys getting hurt, whatever? You saw it happen to Chris Godwin, unfortunately. Dislocated ankle, just had surgery today for the Bucs. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just say this, too, with the Ravens. Like, it's great. You know, I love it. They've won five in a row. They're, they're rolling. Derrick Henry looks like an amazing addition. Huge game for Rashad Bateman. A couple of big plays. Went over 100 at a touchdown. But it's still to me, it's still the same thing where I I just don't see the Ravens ever playing enough close games, like games where they have to come in. When they win, so often this is how they do it. And it's great. It's fun to watch as a fan. You say, oh, my God, they have all this talent, all this potential. But I just want to see a game where the Ravens are down by like 10 points late in the fourth and Lamar has to come up with a drive and the defense has to make a stop to get the ball back. And then he has to lead them on another drive and they have to make plays in the passing game. You know, I want to see that before I say, yeah, this year is going to be different. Now it could just be different because they are that good potentially, but that's always my concern. And the Ravens have just looked great during this winning streak. And they've been able to put games away like last week against Washington, they were able to put the game away just by running the ball. I mean, their offense has been their defense in a sense where their defense is not smothering teams at the end and really just taking you know stepping on the neck of the opponent it's really been like okay let's get a lead and then let's just keep scoring let's just keep churning out the clock with derrick henry and it's a great formula if you can keep the lead for long enough but yeah that would be my one wish list for the ravens to see a couple games this year where they're really tested their backs are against the wall they have a big comeback and i could say okay now we know maybe it's different because what happened was last year they only had three i think they only had three wins that were less than one score. And remember they won 13 games total and they came into the playoffs and they blitzed Houston. It was like, great. Okay. We know they're good. But then they got behind. They gave it that early touchdown to the chiefs. And it was like, you just felt it was different. It was like, okay, now we're not going to be able to, we're not going to blow them out. We're going to have to scrap. And they just couldn't do it. And so yeah. that's my big question mark for the Ravens now. Yeah. And then the other Monday night game that was on only on ESPN plus, which is ridiculous. Uh, this is first off the NFL. It's never going to change because because I, I know I'm an idiot and I'm going to watch. Yeah, and I'm going to find ways to watch. But you need Peacock, Prime, ESPN Plus, ESPN on cable. You need Paramount. You need Netflix to be able and YouTube TV if you want out of market games to be able to watch every single NFL game. That's five six seven like. What are we doing here? We're making it more and more difficult to watch games. And and kudos to Rob Manfred. They have discussed about ending blackouts with with um, MLB.tv. I think they're in some legal trouble anyways, because why is someone in Alabama not able to watch a team that's three markets over? Um, you know, it's funny that so, it, it, it's only an American thing in baseball, because I remember living in 
Toronto, you could watch the Jays games on MLB, but in any other city I've ever been in, you can't watch the local teams. You can't watch the Mets and Yankees here. You can't watch the Rays in Sarasota. So, yeah, I hope they can end that. Yeah. Well, they, they, were, they the were talking NFL, about it. Does the NFL still have that rule about local blackouts if they don't sell out? Because I went to the Colts Dolphins playoff game back in 2000. It was blacked out in Miami because they didn't sell out the game. I don't think that's a thing anymore. I think they finally got rid of that because okay. I feel like I would I would at least be seeing a lot because, I mean, there's definitely teams out there who, you know, just they, they don't sell any tickets and I'm not hearing about any blackouts, like local blackouts. So I think that's okay. But just blackouts in general are crazy. I pay for a product. You should be delivering that product to me. Like that's yeah, yeah insane. Um, but Chad Ryland walks it off. You, you had... The Cardinals money line. I was very shocked. So congratulations. I, I did. Yeah, I did. I don't know. I was just a hunch that the Chargers could find a way to mess that game up. Yeah, somehow <laughs> I didn't feel like I had a good week. I still went four and two. So yeah, um, but I didn't even watch the game. I I couldn't. Obviously. No, I couldn't either. Um, I was, I was just paying more attention on, to my um, bet. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's funny. Yeah, the Chargers. No, this is this is just the game the Chargers that. lose. This is a game the Chargers. Well, they yeah, didn't score the touchdowns. How do you win when you, you know, only the Steelers can pull that off or the Chiefs. They can, you know, win games like 18 to 10 or 15 to 6. But the Chargers didn't get in the end zone. They fumbled. I did see, I did happen to be out uh, for a little bit and saw the play where there was a big pass play down the field and the Chargers were about to score and the guy got stripped at the two-yard line and the Cardinals were covered in the end zone. And who knew at the time that that would be, potentially the only touchdown opportunity that the Chargers would have. So they chargered it up. The Cardinals found a way to win. What, what's the, the Cardinals are what? Two and two and four now, or three and four. Well, the three, that's right. They three and four. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're in it. They're in it in the NFC West. I mean, it's, you don't need to do much. They will play they're Seattle. One game back. Times. Yeah. They're only a game back. Yeah. This was just, I mean, Herbert put up the yards, but they were all, you know, between the twenties, basically. And uh, Charger's going to charge her. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just a typical Chargers loss. Jim Harbaugh doesn't fix Chargering. He can't. Um, chargering is undefeated. They almost chargered last week, too, uh, against Denver. They gave up a big, a big lead. So, um, But let's go to the Week 8 games. We are almost halfway through the regular season. It's crazy. It doesn't even feel like it. Um, but let's start with a Thursday night game. Vikings Rams again another stinker on Thursday night. Um, yeah, I don't know how to size it up. I think this is a, a bounce back game for the Vikings after a tough loss. Rams kind of stink, don't have their weapons, so I think you'd give the edge to Minnesota there. Yeah, I'd give it to the Vikings as well. Um, no international game this week. I think we only have the Germany game left. I think. Um, but no London, London is done. Eagles, Bengals in Cincy. Um, yeah, almost, uh, they almost played the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. The, the Bengals need to bounce back. They need to win a home game. I, I feel like they're actually a good pick here because the Eagles have just underwhelmed this year and they don't feel like a five and two team and the Bengals yeah. don't feel like a team that should be owned for at home. I would lean towards the Bengals there. I think especially after that win against the Giants, um, it really felt – it was like, okay, they, they came out and they beat the shit out of the Giants. Well, now you actually have to go play a game, at least against a team that's at your level. I would say they're they're pretty much at the Eagles' level right now. Um, and they, they have to – yeah, the Bengals have to win at home at some point. They can't go 0-8 or 0-9 at home. So maybe this will be it. I'll go Bengals too. Uh, Ravens-Browns. Jameis Winston? Lamar Jackson, I'm excited. I'm really excited. It's going to be crazy. It is a division road game. They're never easy. Browns did just lose. I feel like the Ravens could struggle a little, but they should still win the game. I, I, they, they've, they've always seemingly played well in Cleveland, actually better against the Browns in Cleveland than at home. So I'll, I'll take the Ravens, but I could see them struggling a little bit in this game. Um, if it's Jameis... I'm going with the Browns. I think the Jameis bump is real. I think this is a division, you know, this is a divisional game. 
Um, the Browns are coming out. It's it's weird to say that when your quarterback goes down, you almost feel less pressure. But I think with with Watson going down, you almost have no pressure at this point. You can go out and just have fun and play football. I think this is a great spot for Cleveland to win, especially at home. Um, that nine point spread looks really dangerous. I'm going to pick the Browns to win money line. This feels like a game the Ravens would lose early too. Like, you know, more than anyone, it kind of feels like something like this just feels like a gimme to them and they're going to struggle at least. So at the very least, someone take Browns plus nine, nine is a lot. Um, Titans lions in Detroit, Detroit, they're 11 point favorite here. Yeah, I would still take Detroit. Tennessee is just awful. It's... Yeah. Mason Rudolph doesn't change that either. Does not make a single difference. Um, Cardinals, Dolphins, another gross one. Miami, their three-point home favorites. That's just, that's like the standard, I think. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'd probably take Miami just because Cardinals on the road, on the East Coast, it just never trustworthy but then again i mean cardinals are playing well i don't know just feels like both these teams deserve to be under 500 which would be accomplished by miami winning so i'll go miami i think the cardinals have not won two consecutive games in like two years or something if we do then i want to see because they hold on i want to look at what they yeah Okay, so they lost to the Packers last week. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Dolphins. They they won't win two consecutive again. Jets, Patriots in New England. Um, the, do we have to play this game? Does does anyone have to? Does this game have to be played now? Can can this be one of those that we put in put on like in in June when we need football? Yeah, yeah. This is. Uh, I mean, it's just the Jets stink so much. Just out of principle, I'm going to take the Patriots to cover seven points. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a good bounce back spot for the Jets. I think they need a win really bad. So I'll, I'll pick the Jets here, I guess. Um, Falcons, Bucks in Tampa. It, this one's an exciting one, actually. I know my voice didn't sound excited, but I am excited. Um, I think Atlanta. I mean, they win these division games. The Bucks are beat up now. I don't know if Evans is going to play. Obviously, Godwin's not going to play. Um, I think Cousins gets his mojo back this week. Yeah. The battle of the four and three battle for the, uh, for the division at this point, Falcons win, they will take that tiebreaker as well. So they'll have a two game, essentially a two game lead on the bucks. I'm going Falcons here. Uh, Packers Jags in Jacksonville as well in Jacksonville Packers make their return or Jaguars make their return to Jacksonville. I, I actually think this could be a good upset pick. I, I think Jacksonville just, I don't know, this it seems like a spot the Packers could let down a little bit after that big win against Houston. Um, I don't know. This is just a weird gut feeling game where I feel like Jacksonville shouldn't be. They're not that bad, are they? Like two and six? Or the Packers oh, they're that six? bad. Yeah. I think they're that Nothing bad. Else, I, I think, think it's bad. Packers. Yeah. It's Packers all day. Um, Colts, Texans in Houston. Big one. I'm going Texans. We already know. Um, I, I do think we're going to, I, we're going to keep it close though. I don't think, I think it's just these division games, especially with these two quarterbacks. Um, Richardson at all has always seemed to play pretty well against Houston. So, but I'm still taking the Texans maybe in a close one. Maybe you need Jonathan Taylor. He's questionable, but I, I would take the points. I, I like the Colts to cover six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Saints chargers. Ugh. do we have to do this one? The Drew Brees yeah. bowl, Drew Brees bowl. Drew Brees Bowl, yeah. Um, uh, seven such a big number to give the Chargers, but the Saints have been so pitiful lately. I, I, I do think I would take the Chargers. I think this is a good bounce back spot for them. Yeah, I just don't believe in the Chargers in seven points, but they they can't be under five hundred with with Jim Harbaugh. They can't. He's going to yeah. come out having them ready to ready to fight. I'll go Chargers. Bills, Seahawks, the Marshawn Lynch Bowl. mm Hmm. Uh, ooh, yeah, I feel like Seattle's got a, got a little confidence now. They lost their last one at home. I'm going to go Seattle. Yeah, especially on the road. I, I like Seattle at home, or Bill's on the road. I like Seattle at home here. Yeah. Um, and they're, and they're underdogs at home. So yeah, I really think this one, this is a good one for Seattle. 
Panthers-Broncos rematch of Super Bowl 50. It does not look like Super Bowl 50 over there. I'll say that. Um, I'm, I guess I'll go Broncos. Yeah, I'm going Broncos. This Panthers team is just garbage. I mean, yeah, really bad. Um, Chiefs, Raiders, Kansas City, they're 10 point favorites. Um, is is uh, Pierce going to get them ready to go? Are they going to be up for this one? I actually think that Raiders are a good bet to cover and find a heartbreaking way to let the Chiefs go 7-0. So I'm going to take Vegas to, with the points, obviously. Yeah, I, I concur with you there. Um, Bears, Commanders, big matchup. I think Jaden Daniels is going to play. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels. Um, this one's going to be fun, too. Especially off a of bye for, for uh, Caleb Williams. They played last year, and it was a terrible game. The Bears blew them out in Washington when they were either – yeah, I think they were winless at the time. Is that Thursday night football? It was a Thursday night game, yeah. I uh, I think I want to go Commanders, assuming Daniels plays, obviously, if he doesn't. Different story. I just – I think the Commanders are, are for real. I think the Bears need to come back to earth a little bit. I just I, – I don't know. So, if a healthy Daniels is out there, give me Washington. Yeah, I'll roll with Washington as well. Um, Chicago just doesn't they, – they don't feel as ready yet. Washington's offense has just really felt fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll go with Washington. Uh, great uniform matchup, good history matchup, Sunday Night Football, Cowboys, Niners. Um, I don't think we expected them to be as bad, either team, to be as bad as they are right now. This is like a skeletons in the closet kind of game for – Dallas, they just never beat San Francisco, but the time to do it is now. Bobby yeah. looks like a genius. He said, Niners are going to miss the playoffs this year. Things are trending in the wrong direction. I actually think, I don't know if Dallas is going to win, but four points, I could easily see them keeping it within a field goal. I'm going to take the points with the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I don't know. It's the Cowboys. When are they, when do they ever no, like, I know. make They're their fans? on the road right. this year, though. They are three and zero on the road. Uh, That's so they, true, they but it's through. it's the Niners. They they it is the Niners. I'm going to go with the Niners. Um, they, they just never give their fans what they're expecting. Um, and Giants Steelers. I don't really know what is there a rivalry here. What is why is this on Monday Night Football? I feel like there's at least two games that would be better than than this one. Yeah. Uh... I, don't know, I never like giving the Steelers a lot of points. I mean, it's only five and a half or six and a half now. Um, I think I would take the Steelers, but I still feel like it'll be a little closer than people expect. Because the Steelers, they usually don't. I know they blew out the Jets. They usually don't have to blow teams out. and they, They're like more comfortable playing these close games. I'll take the Steelers because the last time they hosted an NFC East team in prime time, it didn't end well for them against Dallas. But I think they'll... They'll get it done against the Giants. Probably like an ugly, low-scoring, you know, 20 to 10 kind of game. Did they play in a Super Bowl at some point? They've never Is played a Super Bowl, I was going to say, because the Steelers okay. have been to eight, I believe, and the Giants have been to five, but they've never crossed paths. Because the Giants, you know, they had a couple in the 80s, uh, or they had one in the in 86 and the 90, and then the Giants made it in 07 and won, and then the Steelers won it in 08. So, yeah. just missed. Yeah, it. that's odd. It feels it feels like they would have seen each other at some point, but yeah, two yeah, very historic franchises. Other. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Steelers are are the play right now. It's Russ. He, he's going to cook. The kitchen is officially open for mm -hmm. Russ. It's unlimited right now too. I mean, he scored thirty seven points. So, Mister Unlimited is is playing to his uh, playing to his name. I'll go Steelers. Fuck it, I'll take them with the points too. Maybe they'll blow them out. It'll be fun. Um, all right. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, the whole thing. Um, and enjoy football. We're, we're almost halfway through the season. So we're, we're kind of right at that midway point. Enjoy it. You don't have it for long. And uh, we'll see you next week.